Next up on the channel, we're back with the E3008. We've done five or 600 kilometers this week, Dublin to Belfast and back again, so some good motorway testing. We're gonna have a quick reminder, look around the outside, the inside, and then also take it out for a drive. Let's get stuck into it. So a quick reminder, look around the E3008. It is a coupe fastback is what they actually call it. You can see it's a very different styling at the rear. Has that new Peugeot design language. It's 4.54 millimeters long. It's nearly 1.9 millimeters wide and 1.65 meters tall. So it's fairly substantial on the road. Wheelbase of 2.739. So based on that STLA platform, it does come in hybrid and plug-in hybrid. So it's not a fully electric vehicle as in dedicated only, but it, they reckon they have started with the electric first on it. It's nine centimeters taller, sorry, longer and a little wider and a longer wheelbase than the current model. Comes in two different battery sizes, 73 kilowatt hour, which is the one we have today, 71 usable, and then a 98 kilowatt hour, which is coming towards the end of the year. That's the one that has, well, estimated over 700 kilometer range, 94 of that usable. Today we're with the Okanut White. It's kind of like a grey, it's not really white white. Uh, Two-tone as well, so you can have the dark, the black roof. Um, but that off at the front, you can see it is a fairly slab nosed. There is no flunking underneath there and 3008, no matter what the powertrain is on the front of it. This is the GT line, so you're gonna get the daytime running lights internally and then all models will get the claw mark with the high B model. Some glass black there and some gray, it's a bit dirty, apologies. Uh, large Peugeot shield with your radiating grille. These are 20 inch, probably not helping the um, range on it. You've got some gloss black all the way around SUV. With the GT trim, you get your shield on the side. You've got this lovely kind of uh, brushed gray all the way along that goes into the actual rear spoiler. Nice feature that you'd have on the 3008 is there is no weather strip visible. So when you look at that door, you can see that rubber. It's door panel to glass, glass black B pillar. I think it looks great. Probably has the largest charging flap uh, in the world. And then maybe that's to accommodate the fuel side of things as well. AC 11 kilowatt, um, 22 kilowatt optional and DC 160 kilowatt. There is vehicle to load technology as well. Coming down the line, we've been told. With that coupe roof line, you've got that. Like the 408, the kind of cat's ears, large shark fin aerial, nice. You can actually see it is a proper spoiler. And then around the rear, you do get to understand that it is the E3008 because of that anodized blue with the three claw marks. You've got Peugeot, Peugeot with the mid-level brake lamp. And on the GT trim, it is powered. Decent sized boot. It has a split floor as well. You can see it's a 20, 40, 20, sorry, 40, 20, I never get that right. 40, 20, 40, it's 520 liters. And then if it's the all wheel drive version that you're gonna go for, that drops down to 470. And you can get a full size spare wheel inside there as well. So really good size. 12 volt up here, some shopping bag hooks. It has this nice feature where if you want to get access, you have the ability of holding up so you can see exactly what's inside there. Some tie off points, actual tie off points. Then if you want the, the physical or the metal rings. Yeah, good. What do you think of the styling? I had the uh, Obsession Blue, which probably is my favorite color. This seat is set for me. I'm 188 centimeters, six foot two. Some nice fabrics, designs. You can see some Stellantis switch gear that's been used across all platforms. This is soft, this is not. You've got a, a door pocket down here. Two Isofix in the rear here. And that GT trim. So you've got that Alcantara in the middle with that vegan leather on the outside of it nearly a flat floor there's about an inch of a lip you've got your vents in the rear you've got two usb type a's sorry two usb type c's i take that back 
and the 12 volt back here in a little pocket above it and below it. So knees just about, feet, yep. And then headroom. This one hasn't got fully black roof lining. So decent space there. And this one has a third phone holder, cup holder, and third headrest. And this is your dash, what it looks like in that center console. On the door, you've got your central locking, your window controls, your door mirror controls, and your window lock in the rear. You've got that Peugeot, Peugeot sill plate. Lots of adjustment in this seat. You've got the lumbar support here. Now, everything is manual on it. For a car that's 50,000 euros in the GT trim, but is it saving weight so it's more efficient? Uh, start, stop, your Stellantis. So you'll see that starts up putting across a lot of Opel, Peugeot, Citroens, etc., etc. You've got this gorgeous floating display. Um, and then you've got the eye toggles down here then as well. So let's uh, stop the extra Martin there on EV News uh, Daily. In the UK. Um, and you can swip them. So you can shortcut those as to what you want. No head up display because it's kind of sitting above this uh, flat top, flat bottom GT style steering wheel. And it's got that um, glass black. But they're physical buttons in fairness to them. Over my right knee is a coin holder turning off the internal sensor. And then also you have the ability to open the power tail lift. Good visibility on it. I'm just missing the bottom of it, just how I'm sitting. So that's roughly what I'm seeing. So I'm not seeing the Peugeot, I'm not seeing the French flag. Sometimes I don't get to see the percentage, but I do get to see the range. Uh, over the last 400 kilometers, I've been getting around 18.2. And then if I cycle through them, uh, where are we go? What's this, I'm sorry, two seconds. And then one more. And so dropping it down to 16.5. If I can focus on that, there you go. Over the last 2,139 kilometers. So on a 71 kilowatt hour battery, probably in or around that, just under that 400 kilometers. I'm getting about 350 on doing 18.2, uh, just multiplying it out. It is thirsty, it is heavy. Um, Central console then is the wireless charging pad up here. Uh, sometimes the phone gets hot. Then you've got some shortcuts because it isn't ventilated. You've got your drive mode selector, your hazard lights, your physical uh, um, up and down on the volume, and then your handbrake. You've got a large cubby pocket in here, and I use that because up here, if you go a bit crazy, it'll the phone will spin out of it. So there's two charging ports there, and a 12 volt down there as well. So that's nice, the fact that you can close it up. Uh, you've got your medium and your large cup holders. You've got your butterfly. And it goes down in here a fairly substantial bit and it feels like it's cooled. Is there a vent in there somewhere? I presume so. Yes, there is. I can feel it down there as well. That's a cooled. And then over here, you've got your half glove box. And up in the top of that unit, you've got a sunglass holder. Uh, rubbered on the bottom, but not lined in the top. Dark in the roof now on this one. You've got your Peugeot embossed in the actual Alcantara. Yeah, headroom in the front. Loads, like eight centimeters. What else have I forgotten about before we take it out for a quick spin as a reminder as to what it's all about. 19 and 20 inch we talked about already. Um, Engaro blue, Obsession blue, Oconaut white, Pearl black, Artens grey and Titanium grey. So they're the six colours. Um, the heat pump is standard. Drag coefficient of 0 0.27. Yeah, so it's not very slippery. And with these 20 inch wheels, so I was doing 100, 110 on the motorway up to Belfast. Yeah, that was fairly whipping down. Um, 2.1 and 2.2 tonnes. Standard range, 210 horsepower, front wheel drive. It's saying get 525, you're probably closer to that 400 real world range. And then the long range single motor, 
at saying 709 but you probably be getting mid to high 500s looking forward to trying it out the dual motor two 320 horsepower gets they're saying 525 so it'd be near that 400 uh, 21 inch screen we've talked about um allure and gt are the two trim levels and then within that you've got three option packs Apologies, my sat nav is going away here. Up against the likes of the Nissan Aria, the Model Y, the Ionic 5, EV6, and the Skoda Enyaq or the Volkswagen ID5. Um, let's take it out for a quick spin. The Nebo Electric Vehicle Show is back in partnership with Bank of Ireland. The show's second instalment will take place in the RDS Simmons Court on the 10th of November 2024. Building on the sold out success of the previous show, this will be Ireland's largest ever motor show. Experience all things e mobility with over 30 manufacturer brands displaying over 80 electric vehicles, the latest in charging and energy solutions, engaging discussions with industry experts, exhilarating test drive experiences, and captivating live vehicle demonstrations. Visit nevo.ie today to learn more and register for your free ticket. What's it like driving the E3008 engines? Engine start stop. That's a, uh, a button that's been used a lot. Um, all the Stellantis stuff. For some reason, I'd like it down here in the center console, but anyway, down to D. And there isn't a B mode in this because there's regenerative braking paddles. There's three levels in that as well. There isn't one-stop driving and there isn't automatic handbrake. Please, please give me automatic handbrake. For his blind spot, uh, we're in drive mode, handbrake off. It does release if you do dry away without it. Very smooth. Also living with it for the week, uh, I find that the display is narrow. I think I prefer a portrait display rather than a landscape display. Now, it's interesting because this week I have the Renault Scenic. So I'm literally dropping back this. I'm picking up the Renault Scenic, so I'm going from one to the other. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what I get, what, which I prefer. Very smooth, great visibility. Good size wing mirrors in the door. Decent with visibility out the back, but you can see right down to the front. So there's a nice height, obviously SUV. You're going to get that with an SUV. Steering wheel is at the, the, the Peugeot small size, whether you like it or hate it. So we're currently in the strongest regenerate, regen braking level, look level three on your center console. You'll see what mode you're in, so the D mode for drive, and then there's three little arrows beside it. Yeah, I found the cruise control this week very good, uh, and it also has automatic lane change. So when you indicate it, it'll ask you, do you want to press OK, and it'll automatically change over for you when it realizes it's in a two-lane carriageway, which is good, enough power. Range is the only thing that I'd be a bit concerned about, just the fact that it's so heavy, these 20 inch, I'd like to get it on a 19 inch wheel model just to see what's the difference in range. It has a heat pump, so that shouldn't make a difference. I think it's aero and 19 inch or 20 inch wheels. That's the, that's why we're not getting that better efficiency. Now in saying that uh, 16.5 isn't bad over the lifetime of the vehicle. That's four and a half thousand, sorry, 2,100, 400. Overall decent as I remember it from France but just nice to get it for a while on Irish roads. I've already seen a few of them out there already, so they are definitely starting to sell. Uh, and at 50,000 euros, you're getting a lot of range. You're getting a lot of tech. Yeah, it's going to put it to the rest of them. Now, this week, I'm in the... I'm dropping this back this morning, and I'm going into a Renault Scenic. Pretty much a direct competitor. Also French, very similar styling. And so stay tuned to the channel to see what I think of that. Um... Hopefully you've enjoyed that second look, second drive of the E3008. Have you already bought one? Are you getting one? Jump into the comments and let me know. And remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, I know you're going to enjoy the next video too.